recording. And welcome everyone to FIMC VI's first virtual workshop with Ancient City Brailler Repair. Uh, they've done some face-to-face -face workshops before. If anyone needs captioning, we have a live captioner. Uh, you want to click the live transcript button at the, the bottom of your Zoom screen or your Zoom menu. Our opening code for today's session is plate, P-L-A-T-E. Not the kind of plate that you eat off of, but that's okay. And if you want to fill out the um, form to receive CEUs, the CEU form can be found at the website that I just put in the chat box at uh, bit.ly slash FIMC slash CEUs or hyphen CEUs. Um, it's also on our FIMC website under forms. Okay, so I am going to let Carl and Tim, Carl Jacobson and Tim Puck from Ancient City Brailers take it away. Good afternoon. My name is Carl Jacobson. Um, I'm from Ancient City Brailler Repair and with us today is also Tim Puck. Uh, we are a dynamic uh, Brailler duo, if you will. Um, due to circumstances, we're um, separated, but uh, still uh, here in in uh, voice and spirit and, and video, so welcome. Um, full disclosure, both uh, Tim and I um, do teach at the Florida School for the Deaf and Blind. That's kind of how all this got started. Um, our role here as orientation mobility instructors is our main job um, in the evenings, holidays, uh, weekends, and with our wife's permissions. Um, we work after school uh, fixing close to a fleet of a little over 350 brailers here at FSDB. Um, and that's our main role um, here. So we came up with Angel City Briller to offer um, help for those in the district, um, state, uh, everywhere. So, and slowly and surely we've been getting uh, people and working with FIMC, who's been a great partner. Um, it's been extremely helpful. Um, so with that said, um, this workshop, the next, uh, today, the next three sessions are all about uh, cleaning the Briller. So today we're gonna start um, taking the plates apart. Um, and so if you notice, there are, um, there's a bottom plate, there's a top plate, there's a back plate, and there's a front plate, and this part underneath the keys that catches just about everything is called an apron. Um, so Tim and Sue, if I'm moving too fast or need to uh, slow down at all or um, any technical glitches, um, please interject. So. Um, without uh, delay, uh, let's talk about some of the tools we're going to use today. Um, in front here, you guys can see um, on this paper to my on my right hand is pretty much what comes in your um, your basic repair kit. Um, I believe Perkins has um, two or three different kits. One's just a basic cleaning kit with a couple brushes and maybe a Phillips head screwdriver. The full kit, which I think um, you guys all be getting, um, is everything on this piece of paper. So. There's um, a flathead screwdriver, a Phillips, um, different other tools for other repairs. And then next to here, and we'll get into more in depth as we go through the workshop, but I just want to give you a kind of a heads up. Um, these are kind of supplemental tools that we found at um, hardware stores. Um, Amazon's great. Um, any kind of online place you can think. Um, and if you do catch the Brailler bug, you will find yourself walking through stores and picking out different tools, and um, it, it just keeps getting bigger and bigger. Um, so um, basically for today, all we're gonna be doing, if you guys are following along, is we're gonna be pretty much working with um, your standard um, Phillips head, let's see if I can get in the shot here, Phillips head screwdriver, okay? And one of the things that are extremely helpful as well, um, I don't think anybody uses these nowadays with um, ice dispensers, but an ice cube tray is um, really helpful for organizing. Um, and forgive me as I go on tangents, that's kind of how I present and talk. And, um, but uh, when I was doing my training initially, um, the guy that taught us basically gave us a bowl and we had to put all the screws in there and you had to identify and find them. Um, but through talking with Perkins and working with them over the years, um, I believe an ice cube tray is actually included in your kit. Um, but um, you know, depending on how many brothers you're working at one time, you may have multiple of these to keep things together and organized because um, I don't know off the top of my hand, but Tim, if you can find the manual real quick or something, maybe mm -hmm. I probably have more access to it. I believe it's like 756 
total parts in the brailler. Um, and 328 most, of them are individual to themselves. Thank you. So, um, which are, it's very unique. Um, it's hard to find. You can find some of these parts um, at different places. I would advise not because Perkins is pretty good in terms of fair market with a lot of their stuff. Um, they really don't mark it up that much. Um, <clears throat> you know, and um, I, I haven't had that much of a problem. So, um, Tim, am I missing anything? Do you want to go right into taking the plates off? Yes, I do want to say that pretty sure you hazed me because you didn't let me use an ice cube tray when you started teaching me. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> you made me throw it in the ice, ice cream container and I had to find my screws by myself. So, um, and, and, sorry, Carl, ahead. I do want to remind you that we uh, invited people to have their brailers in front of them. So we, you and I have to both make sure we're not going into repair mode because pretty sure Carl and I have timed ourselves because we're silly like that and I've gotten the entire brailler taken apart in less than seven minutes and so and we're going to make sure we don't do that tonight <laughs> yeah so and and I'm probably as a as someone who repairs too but it's a little slower but so today we're totally focused on just taking the plates off and um and cleaning um and you know if any questions come up or anything like that um we'll happy to answer that later in in the uh, session towards the last I believe half hour, 20 minutes. But um, maybe Sue, if you could stop us maybe every 15 or uh, 20 minutes. And if someone's got a question that they're just really eager to ask, we could um, address it then if that's helpful. Yeah, that sounds good. So uh, go ahead and put questions in the chat box or um, yes, if we have a, a pause come up or I can just kind of do a check, mm -hmm. check for understanding throughout. Sounds okay. good. Um, all right, so I'll get uh, started on this. Um, what we're gonna do, it sounds crazy like, like uh, 2020 and why we're doing this during COVID-19, um, you're literally going to flip your brailler upside down. Um, so it's one of these moments here. And so the front is still towards me. Um, brailler's upside down. You can use um, in your kit, um, I believe comes a cradle. Um, you can also put it on your lap, which reminds me, um, when we get into opening up the brailler, um, you'll find all kinds of things. At some point, I can show you a, a jar of of really random stuff that we find in brailers from playing cards to um, an entire slate and stylus, um, believe it or not. Um, so they're dirty. So I'm gonna, if you don't mind, just give me a second. I'm gonna put on my apron because I don't wanna ruin my brand new shirt. So just one second. Um, so if you have an apron or an old, um, old shirt, that might be a helpful thing uh, to do. Forgive my moving around here. Yeah, when we repair brailers, we go all out. So we have the nice m machinists aprons. That was a, a Tim gift. So, <laughs> um, <clears throat> and for a while, we were using, uh, you know, like most schools for the blind, they've gone through a transition over the years. And actually, where we're sitting right now used to be the old uh, wood shop um, here at FSDB. So um, now it's half the room is devoted to uh, modern technology, and we're still working on the workhorse, the braille rider. So. Um, a little bit of both worlds here. So we're going to take our um, Phillips screwdriver here. Um, there are a total of 11 screws on the bottom of this plate. And I don't know if you can see in the shot, I can move this over here. But I put all these 11 screws in, you know, the closest uh, little container over here in the ice tray. So um, you'll notice it will rock a little bit. So that's what I'm saying. You can use um, a towel to help with that or um, the cradle. Um, I usually put it in my lap personally. So um, if I'm a little uh, flubby here, um, it's because I'm doing this so you guys can see all this. So forgive my hairy arms, I apologize. Uh, it's just the way I was made. So, uh, so we just take them off and one at a time, nothing to it. Um, some of these may stick. If you do get one that sticks, um, a little trick, and they may come in angles actually like this one here. Um, I. I'll hold off on that. Anyway, if they stick, you can take like a small mallet or a hammer and just tap it just a little. I'm not I'm beating the heck out of it. And sometimes that helps um, loosen some of those screws. And I know some people, if depending upon your experience level, seeing us take these off here and it does get tedious to sit there and um, do this. This, and Carl and I have talked about this back and forth. And this would be the 
only place that we would ever say, sure, you could use something powered, like a quick little like zip screwdriver, because the detriment to these breaking or stripping out isn't the biggest. But if, since this is the first plate of the machine, if you do strip out one of those screws or maybe it's going the wrong way, you have no access to the machine because this is kind of like the key of opening it up. And I love seeing some people's faces taking some bottom plates off right now because some people are giving really gross faces of what the inside <laughs> of the Braille writers look like. Yeah, and you know, to echo what Tim was saying, um, if you notice there's two screws on the sides, those go right into the side plate, which is a, an expensive part. So, I mean, if you strip that out or something gets stuck in there, you might have to replace the whole part. In the end, I mean, honestly, in my early days, I put like four screws in the bottom of this thing because I didn't have enough to, you know, make it across our entire fleet of brailers. Um, it will stay. It's not that big a deal if you don't get them all in or if you strip, you know, have to take a pair of, um, you know, destroy a screw just to get the plate off. Um, you know, 10 out of 11 isn't bad, if that makes sense. Um, so if, if you guys are all at the same spot, we're gonna take um, the plate off and I put it over the side um, and just kind of stack them neatly. You can use a uh, shoe box is really nice for these. Um, do you guys have, uh, ooh, what are they called? I think thermoform boxes. I don't know the background, I don't think I do. Thermoform boxes, no, excuse me. The APH Brailler paper boxes are perfect. Um, they're just big enough to shove all the plates in there and keep things together. Um, and do you guys know those little, uh, <clears throat> Uh, you know, you can buy packs of gum in like a container, a plastic container. Those are nice too. All the screws, all the levers, um, pretty much everything taking the plates off can all fit inside there if you need to box it off and get to it at another time, you know. Um, that would be the other thing too. When you get into this, even cleaning, make sure you give yourself enough time um, to, to do the work and complete it because to me, that's the most frustrating part. You feel that pressure. Um, to, to get it done and try to get it done as fast as possible. Um, and like Tim said, our, our time has slowly ticked up um, over the years for sure. Um, so this is like the key, like Tim said, you can get in here, I can shake out stuff, I can flip this thing over. Oh, um, look, something and maybe fell out. Something did fill out. Oh, look. Was it a peg? Anybody have a geo board, a little, little peg there? Um, yeah, so fun times. Um, <laughs> Little guy, so we'll put that in a little jar of nice things. Um, yeah, so that, and believe it or not, this little thing can actually do a lot of damage. It can get up underneath um, some of the, let's see if I can, I'm going to use a pair of tweezers here. Um, it can kind of get up underneath these keys, and when you push down, it could potentially bust off one of these links in the link pins, which causing a, a bigger repair. So I know this sounds trivial, just doing the cleaning, like, yay, some of you guys have already gone through this and stuff like that. Some of you guys have done some of our previous trainings, but the cleaning solves about 60 to 80% of the problem. And if, and what we're starting to do with ours, since we have a fleet of, of you know, excess of 300 or more, is trying to get them back in on a yearly basis to come in, blow them out, clean them, lubricate them. Um, so you can, you know, keep those parts. Parts don't like to squeak, parts, parts don't like to, uh, to rub against each other. So um, we want to make sure they're nice and clean and nothing's uh, binding anything up. So everybody good? Sue, can you check, make sure everybody's on the same page? Just give me a thumbs and up. I'm, I was also going to say, if you do have a Braille writer in front of you, if you could unmute your screen, if possible, um, that way I can kind of page through while Carl talks and while I talk and kind of keep tabs on that just to make sure. Because like we said, right. we want to make sure that everyone's involved in this and everyone is getting that full experience. So I don't want um, us to start working too fast and going through things um, right. and leaving people behind because that's what this is all about because we're all here to learn. Right. And, and the uh, other part, oh, sorry. The, the other sure part too is, that, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> we're not in the same room. Um, but yes. Um, and what I was going to also add, maybe Carl was about to say this too, is before you take the bottom plate off, because even here, this takes a few minutes to get those screws out give that brailler a shake. We all know what it sounds like, if there's something in it or not. And I had a teacher two weeks ago say, I've been working on this and it gets stuck in the middle and everything else. And I picked it up and I literally just shook it and I turned it upside down and I shook it again and a pen fell out and it was brailing perfectly. 
So the other thing too, like Sue mentioned before, this is all recorded. So we can always, you guys can always go back and I don't want to um, rush through something. And I want to make sure you guys at least have some um, form of digital uh, information that you guys can reference at a later date. So, cause we're already pushing what, 420-ish? 420, yep. And so far, um, yeah, I think everyone's good. They're probably just got their brillers in front of them. Um, we don't have any questions so far. Somebody said she's using an egg carton to keep track of all the little pieces, which is great. Brilliant idea. Perfect. Perfect. All right. So now we've got this. You can really get a good look, um, examine a lot of things, see how things are looking. Um, things are getting a little dirty. Um, I'm going to switch to a, um, a snake cam real quick and just show you some of the grime as we um, go through here. So hold on one second. Forgive me. And if I make anybody nauseous, I'm sorry, I'll go really slow. But you can see even one of the Paul pieces down here, it's got a lot of grime. Okay, this guy's pretty dirty. Um, some of the places where we put lubricant and stuff, which we'll do at a later time, um, already looks kind of dirty. Yours may be clear or clean. Let me back up a little bit if that give you perspective. So I still have it upside down and my embossing heads all the way to my left. Yours may you know, move or, or whatever. So anyway. If you guys need more detail, I just wanted to reference this real quick. We, we can use this and give you guys a little more insight inside the brailler and, and give you perspective. So I'm going to put this back and um, go back to another view. Hopefully we're switching up there. There we go. Woo, that was kind of seamless. Kind of want to do that for myself, make sure it all works. So, you know, that's good. So, um, brailler was upside down, took the plate off. We're going to flip it and just be careful. Eight pounds of steel. So now we're going to start at the top. Again, same Phillips head screwdriver. And we're going to start taking the screws off. Um, you can start in any which order, it really doesn't matter. Pulling those off. And there are six screws um, on the top plate here. And if you haven't noticed yet, Four of them, the ones that are at the very top and closest to you, are um, large, larger, I should say. Um, they kind of look like a big golf tee. And then the ones towards the um, back of the brailler, if the keys are facing towards you, um, are a little smaller. On older brailers, they can look like a small golf tee. Um, and um, on newer brailers, they kind of look like a 10 penny nail um, with a very surrounded over. And so now this is when you take the top plate off, before you go all crazy and shake it around, you just want to make sure sometimes um, these keys here can get, uh, sorry, the levers here can get bent and may cause your brailler to have a little friction getting that out. Um, and one thing I want to mention too, as we start opening up these plates, kind of look for um, possible damage to the brailler. So it gives you a little perspective before you start, um, you know, getting into things that it may be a more serious problem. Usually, you know, can be a little more than clean sometimes. But um, just be mindful of that. Things that just look off or spring loose or something like that. Um, you'll notice that on the back plate, now that we have the top plate off, you can see the, um, what's that? I still have three more screws. No worries. That one tough? They're not turning. Okay. So try downward pressure, uh, maybe even... If you, uh, like if you got a hammer handy or I just like a, 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 a wrap at the top of the screw, um, it could come off. Um, which one's giving you trouble? Is the one towards the back? No, the ones on the right hand side. Okay. All of them. <laughs> All of them. And what does happen, especially if it's on one side, there chances are that brailler could have been dropped. So it uh, starts to seize everything up. Um, and for some reason, they're always dropped on the right side you the, the, that's most knobs i think i feel like that we always change is the right side knob is cocked at a 45 degree angle and you kind of already know and so um that does happen again more often than not and um elizabeth also said the amount of bugs inside of this brailler is disgusting and i also said that's more that happens more often than not is <laughs> this past summer i pulled quite the cockroach out of the bottom of one and I was not a happy camper at that time. Yeah, bugs um, seem to happen, dog hair, um, 
you name it, we probably had it. Um, I believe it, at um, at Perkins, they actually had one that somebody shot with a 44 Magnum. So um, it, it's, I don't know, um, crazy things happen to Brailers. So um, I did have a student, she said it wasn't working, so I threw it out. And I'm like, don't ever do that again. Thank you. Uh, Carl, we do have a hand up, uh, Annalie. Okay. Yes, I have a question for those older brailers that have the little knobs on the paper lock. Those need to come off, though, don't they? Thank, yes, thank you, thank you. And so those are really tiny screws. Um, so if you have a smaller Phillips head, those do need to come off as well. Thank you. What? So on the levers here, on older versions, um, there's a little, all this knob, for lack of a better term, um, that is on there. Um, that need to come off in order to take the top plate off. I can't get those screws out. <laughs> yeah, I think we have screws flying. <laughs> screws are loose everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> Somebody said that the margin screw fell out. Uh, some folks can't get them out. Well, when that top plate comes off, that back, um, it's called a paper guide, that will yes. fall right out. And if it's mm -hmm. stuck or bent or jammed, when you go to pull your top plate off, that might just come with it. And if you look at the screen now as well, that's what Carl is holding his hand. That's called the paper guide. I can't get the screws out of the little knobs. Yeah, I can't get the screws out of the plate. And we've got somebody else who has some, um, it seems like some of, some of them might be partially stripped and two okay. can't, can't even yeah. turn. No, that happens too. Um, I think I need a smaller Phillips head or something. That or you can take um, what I found. Yeah, a smaller Phillips head or um, even a um, gently, you know, I don't want you to ruin it, but um, you've even used, um, Tim, correct me if I'm wrong, but like a small pair of uh, needle nose pliers if you can grab it um, to slowly twist it without, um, you know, really damaging the screw if possible. Um, I know it's tricky. Um, sometimes those are, this part can be the most frustrating part of the, of the brailler is getting the plates off. So. Well, and this, is a, and this is one of our, this is one of our, uh, one of the hopefully few downfalls of us having to uh, do this. Cause normally if this would happen and we were in person, we would just start going around the run over and help you guys and just quickly be unscrewing everything to get everybody on that same page. So, using one of these. My only suggestion, if, if time becomes a factor here, is maybe um, you know put put it back together for what you can, and then you know watch what we have, and then we can preview the recording again or look at the recording after Oops. afterwards and follow along that way. Mm -hmm. um, and you can pause and and you know get the proper tools to get some of the screws out. Um, <laughs> I wish I could reach through the, the screen and help you guys. <laughs> okay. All right, see if you can get that one out. So yeah, just straight downward pressure and a little bit of brute force. It's not coming out for me. It's gotta come the rest of the way out. Okay, let's try this one, please. Well, while I can still um, look at the top plate here, we, we removed the, um, excuse me, the uh, paper guide right here, and it just kind of rests on the back. You'll see a washer on there. And if you'll notice, and we'll examine some of these parts uh, in more detail with the snake cam uh, when we kind of put these back together, but there's a curved side or a beveled side to that, which is um, needs to be facing the inside of the brailler. But again, we'll talk about that some more. Um, and then, there's a screw here and underneath the screw, just be careful, there should be. Sometimes people put these back together and they lose this part. But there's a little tiny split washer underneath the screw that holds the lever for the carriage. So when you take that out, just be really mindful of the washer and when you grab it out, just kind of keep your eye on it because sometimes it'll fall down the brailler um, or off a table. And so, um, I don't know if you can see, can I ask a question, please? Certainly. How do you get the little knobbies off of the side? A, a very tiny Phillips um, screwdriver. Those little knobby things? Yep. How do I get them off? 
So there's a, a Phillips screwdriver on the inside of the lever. And if you hold on to the knob with your uh, uh, finger and thumb, or mm -hmm. even a pair of pliers that can grab that knob and then insert your uh, Phillips head into the small portion of the um, screw and turn, uh, I guess, if you're facing the screw counterclockwise. Yeah, they're, and they get, they get really tight. I've really had to get in there and um, undo those. I'm way behind, guys. I'm sorry. You're all right. While she's working on that, I'll talk. So the screw and it's got a split washer in there that's really tiny. And so what we do is hold those two together. And then while we pull the lever out, and you might have to um, kind of give a little wiggle to get it out. Sometimes there may be a lot of grease impacted in there. Um, it could be jammed. Um, if it happened to fall or break, um, may cause issues. And then what I do, because this screw looks very similar to, if you notice some of those um, top plate screws towards the back of the browler, they look really similar. So I screw this one back into the, um, into the lever a couple turns just to make sure it's, it's in there. And then I put it um, with my, so my tray. So right now um, we're looking at the bottom screws, top plate screws, and then we have a separate compartment for the lever and the, um, Tim, what's it called again? I'm drawing a blank. Paper guide. Paper guide. Thank you. Paper guide. And th there was a question in regards to when taking these screws out and Carl, if you can point to this area as I talk about it, um, all these screws that you took them out of are connected to the plate by a square nut. And so there should be a square nut in every single place you take out a screw and that would be um, minus the bottom plate. You will not take any out of a square nut. And then when we get to it, there will be no um, square nuts when we take the apron off. But otherwise, everywhere else, um, those plates should be connected to the left or right plate um, by those square nuts. Yeah, I don't know if you can see pointing here. The camera's picking it up. Might be a little hard to see. Tim, do you think the snake cam might be useful? Um, that this? or take it out and put it on your hand. Okay. Or even hold it up over your shoulder. Uh, I'll try that too. Let's see. So where forearm this here? I might take the nut out to pull it over your shoulder. Not the oh, rail. my bad. Sorry. <laughs> trying to be helpful, Tim. All right. You're trying to. I'll pull. So you can see I'm taking a pair of tweezers. Um, in your kit, if you got the full kit, small little Allen kit, you get a toothpick or Allen uh, wrench or a toothpick to get in the hole. You can slide it out and be careful because. This one's actually really sticky. And the reason is because they put what's called um, packing grease or they call it stick wax. Um, you can buy it on Amazon for like, I don't know, 16 bucks a tube and it'll last you two lifetimes. Um, and so it's a square nut. And on some of the brailers, um, the different versions, maybe the light touch, these square nuts might be rounded over on the corners. Not a big fan of those because they just kind of keep spinning. Um, they've gone through, Perkins has gone through different variations of um, toolings and uh, designs of the brailler. Um, but I've been told they're going back uh, to a more classic uh, brailler, which I think is good um, because I think they were getting a little, um, uh, yeah, a little too much play in them. Not as, uh, not as, uh, I don't know how to say it. And we can keep the square nuts in for now. We just wanted to show those. Um, somebody asked that question. Those um, in this example for Carl's brailler, the one that's in front of him, they're packed in there so they're not going to move. But with an older brailler that's been through a little bit more and maybe shaken around a little bit, um, you'll start to take those plates off. And when you start kind of moving that machine around, they will fall right out. And so they are all the same size besides the two that you just took out on the back side of the brailler on the top plate. Carl, if you could point to those two areas. Back, I'm sorry, say it again. So the square nuts are all the same size, except for the back two, where Carl right is gonna point there. right there and right there, because those are two different screw sizes. And then another place you would run into two different uh, sizes are the front plate, which we are yet to take apart. And then Carl was showing you what we call the stick wax, and that's what it is called. 
Um, yeah, yeah. Casserole makes it, and it's it will seriously last. You can buy two of that, and it'll last you I've, fifty years. I've had this for four years, and I'm probably I don't know an inch or two inches down. Um, I use a little pen cap. I don't know if you can see that to kind of put it in um, the groove, and then behind that, I put the uh, the nut in there. So that's just another thing. What you can do is someone buy this and then split it up amongst you guys and you'll be set for a long time. But um, for reference at a later date, um, Casparel Stick Wax. And I bought this on Amazon. I don't remember the price. I think it wasn't, wasn't any more than $20. Okay, so we've done the bottom plate, the top plate. Um, those of you are working, if we've got time at the very end, we can definitely help and get through things. If you find, just advice to you guys, if you find that you're just not able to keep up or something's really binding and jamming and you just can't get it done today, um, I would advise if you have a spot, hold it off to the side. If not, put the plates back together and we'll try to uh, maybe find some time or maybe we can meet one-on-one -on -one, um, and kind of help you guys talk you through it if that's something we can work out with FIMC, okay? Yes, and wanna... Carl, they need the plates removed for next Wednesday session, right? If you can, um, so, again, we're recording this so you can follow along and-, and Right, um, exactly. Do so if you can't so. quite get it off uh, tonight, you still have an, a week to, um, to work that out or do some troubleshooting with some of us. So we'll Absolutely. keep- Absolutely. So. Awesome. Okay. So we're going to um, flip the brailler. The keys are now facing us. Um, you can slowly turn it or you can take it around and um, either way, however you want to get the back, back of the brailler facing you. Um, again, same screw. Screwdriver, you can use the, um, um, the smaller one or the bigger, um, the bigger Phillips head screwdriver sometimes works if you need a little more torque um, with that. So that could be an option if it fits in the screw. As long as you're not stripping the screw, that might help for some of those um, screws that are tricky. So um, there's only four. And again, they're the same size as the large screws that were on the, um, the top plate. Sorry if my head's in the shot. So when taking off these four screws, um, these are the same of those, I don't know if Carl called them ice cream cones or golf tees earlier, because we kind of use those interchangeably. But these will be those bigger screws that are interchangeable with the four large top plate screws. And so if for some reason your tray fell over and your organization is all cattywampus, you should have a grand total of eight of those bigger ice cream, ice cream cone golf tee screws. Yep. All right. So we're going to pull the back. Can you, can you just stay in this area? <laughs> a little hubby help. Sure. Um, we're going to... Um, and I also I wanted to show at the back, if you notice while you're facing the back of the, uh, the brailler, um, this is the paper check. This is what tells the brailler, yo, when it gets to the end of the paper, I got to stop. Um, some of you guys may have issues where the paper just rolls up into the machine or um, you guys don't like the paper up enough and it may hit one of the, if you're using braille paper that has a three hole punch on the left hand side. It may get stopped in there and you're like, what the heck, why isn't the brailler or the paper not moving in all the way? Um, there's a spring, a tab. It's a, just a straight spring that clips underneath underneath the, um, the plate. And so when you remove that, you'll see it kind of flick up. Just a heads up when we go back through, we got to make sure that tab spring is caught underneath. Otherwise, the paper check doesn't make that, that clicking sound, okay? So if you have issues with the paper check, when you put it back together, like, uh-oh, I broke it. Just go back and you're going to have to take the top plate off again and then loosen the back plate and make sure that spring is underneath there. And when we put the plates back on tonight, we will demonstrate how to make sure that that flat spring goes underneath the back plate. Absolutely. Um, and something I want to mention too, and this is what I think people get frustrated with when working on the brailers and where I've gotten frustrated and Mr. Puck as well. Every little part of this braille rider is connected to another. It's a system. And so if one part's not working, something else may not work. So that's why it's very important that we're taking the plates off and cleaning them so we can examine the systems and you may be able to give, the, if you're not doing the repair, a repair person, um, a little more information, which is extremely helpful. Background information of what happened to the brailler, um, oh, it's golden um, if I've got some idea. So we've done bottom plate, top plate, back plate. 
Here we go again. We're going to flip the brailler upside down with the keys facing us now. And the April says apron. The April apron is um, facing us, and we're going to take our very long Phillips screwdriver here. And Tim, do you think I should do the snake cam for this part so they can see? It's hard to. Yeah, let's do that. So turn okay. it turn it towards you for now, and then use the snake cam to. Uh, just okay. to show where they're at. Because what's gonna happen, depending upon the year your brailler is designed, there's gonna be two different ways to take the apron off. Um, most of them, because it was very, it was not a very long time that they made this change, was that you will actually have to feed your, if the brailler apron is facing away from you on the right hand side, so you will have to feed that screwdriver through the back assembly of the braille rider. So Carl has flipped his around like I'm explaining it. So Carl go to the right and there is a hole at that back assembly and that's where that long flathead screwdriver, I'm sorry, long Phillips head screwdriver goes through there and feeds all the way to that screw. Sorry, it's really hard to do. <laughs> anyway, you can see it connecting with the um screw here if I can line it up. And then okay, so it just, travels through. Mm -hmm. And so that one travels through. And then on the left side, it there's no space for that. And so you kind of have to go right over the top. Me personally, I like to run the shank of the screwdriver along that screw that's right on the left. So Carl looked up a little bit right there. And that seems to be the perfect spot. And this one can be a little more frustrating because you, there's no good way to get it perfectly lined up. All the screws in this machine should never be over tightened, should never be under tightened. Um, there's usually a good sweet spot to a good hand tightening that should work. And so this left side one can be a little more difficult, but, and if you're reading the manual, it actually says you don't need to take the screws out, that you can just loosen them enough and the apron will come out with the screws connected. But myself and Carl, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but Carl as well likes, we like to just take those screws out all the way. It gives a little bit more freedom that allows for us to get that apron off and kind of not have to worry about hitting the threads on those or um, stripping them out, trying to um, over tighten or loosen them. Yeah, for me, uh, just, you know, if I feel a part's in there, it never gets really removed over. Some of these brailers have been, they're older, you know, they're 50 plus or some of them 70 years old. Um, if you got a screw in there that's never been removed or cleaned, um, that can build up a lot of grime over the years. So I like to take whatever I can um, apart. So, all right, I'm going to put this back. Switch cameras again. And you can see already um, <laughs> I have a little grime on my hands, so that might be happening too. So this may be one where you want to put it in your lap or, um, you know, sometimes I turn it and I get my forearm on there. But again, be careful because if you're retching down on this, it slips and um, I've, you know, just be mindful of your tool and tool use and safety. And I mean, um, we, we do joke about like our aprons and everything else, but before we got those nice shop aprons, um, and I can tell the story to fill time if people are still working on it and Carl can take his apron off. And I mean the apron as the brailler. Um, he, uh, we had these cloth aprons and he was trying to tighten something and it was the exact day that we got those aprons and Carl had slipped and about shoved a flathead screwdriver almost like through into like his rib cage and we used to have these old cloth ones which he would have been in a world of hurt but it skid it skid right off those new shop aprons that we had bought and so it was kind of just funny that yeah. we we're wearing our proper PP and E, but the screw, the screws that we just pulled out should the washer should come with them, and they should yeah, have a washer. Um, should have a washer. I was going to mention, just be mindful of that washer too. It can drop down, which is not a big deal. If you got a lot of things open here, it should fall out on the table. Um, yeah, I, I think PPE is important, and um, making sure um, you know you're prepared. You understand where the working part of the tool is. Try to keep that away from you at all times. So you know, I come in from the back, if it slips, I'm not there, nothing hurt. But if I were to, and I've done this a lot, where 
have it towards me. I'm really, uh, and it slipped, and that's exactly what happened. It was like, whoop. I'm glad I, I had this on. So thank you, Kim. So the apron now, um, I don't know if I can show you this or not, but if you notice, part of the, I'm, I have the brailler on the back at the top, the front, down on the table. And I'm showing this because the front plate actually fits down in a groove inside the apron. So this might be a little tricky in terms of getting it off. Um, so just kind of hold your thumbs on the, um, the two side plates and just kind of slowly wiggle um, and it should come off. You may have to give it like, you know, kind of a good, good wrap, but just be careful. It doesn't fall on the floor. Um, I've chipped one of these before. Um, and another thing too is the exam, especially when you get going back, because we talked about the angle from the long screw coming in to put that back in, really examine the inside of, um, of these uh, screw uh, holes inside the casting. They get grime in there. Sometimes they get little um, pieces of metal in there from the casting or the screw itself and examine your screws. If your screw has any warping or grime in there or something, um, clean it before you put it back in. Um, sometimes I like to put a little dab of rubbing alcohol, which is by the way, what we mainly use to clean the majority of our brailers, um, to put that in there. It will eventually evaporate, so no harm, and it doesn't really cause any corrosion. Uh, we try to find um, the highest uh, proof or whatever, highest percentage, um, so we found this on Amazon. Was it 16 bucks a bottle, Tim? Yes, and it was very sporadic when I found it because wow. we've looked, we've looked for months and haven't been able to find anything in store and everything else because of our current climate that we do live in. But I lucked out one day and decided to look for it. So if you can find it, we try and use 90, and we'll just keep saying 90 proof, yeah. 90 proof or more because anything below that the alcohol either has extra moisture and stuff and it takes longer to dry and it also will um, leave a film on the braille writer itself. Yeah. And so, yeah. and we've definitely noticed that, but if you're using 90 or above, or especially if you can find 99.9, like that one is, you can tell because you'll wipe it, you'll scrub it and it will be dry instantly. Yep. So, um, yeah. and so, also, um, Carl, I want to interrupt real quick. If your apron is stuck, what I have a tendency to do sometimes, because if you can see that um, the front plate, there's actually the little teeth on it. So right above Carl's knuckles. Amanda, I see you waving. Yeah. I'm only seeing tools. Your tools, I don't see the machine. Is anybody else having that issue? No, not me. Yeah, what I, happened? That, and maybe it's your view on your Zoom. Uh, maybe try clicking speaker view. Is that Oops. Zoom 100? Do I need to click that down maybe? Possibly. Oh, there we go. All right. Sorry. Okay. You're fine. You're fine. She's back. Yeah, but I still can't get that screw out on that back plate. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Keep it's, working on it. <laughs> and so what I, the teeth, that are on the front plate um, that hold that apron on, they're offset. So it's more difficult to almost start putting it on and we'll get there. But something that I do like to do myself, especially when it's stuck, Carl, if you could just hold that apron on like you're, like it's still on there. Yep. Um, you can take a flathead screwdriver or, or even that Phillips one is there is a little bit of a lip right there. So you can, take a screwdriver and you can kind of feed it underneath the front of that apron from the back. So Carl, put your screw, t screw head tip underneath. Nope. The flathead screw? It. Yeah, use the flathead one. Um, so your kit does not come with a long shake flathead screwdriver, but we would suggest one. Yep, right in the middle. And then kind of use it like a fulcrum and a big lever and I give it a little bit of a, either a twist or even a little bit of a slap on the back end and the apron should pop off like that. Oh. That's to the side. Um, so bottom plate, top plate, back plate, apron, and then we flip over and have the keys facing towards you. And again, with a Phillips head screwdriver, we're going to remove 
these two screws here. So these two screws are different. This is going to be confusing, but as before I said that there's two different sides of the square nuts. So these two screws have the same size uh, nuts that go into the plate, left and right plates, but the two screws that Carl just took out are different than the two that are in the top plate. If that confused anybody, I apologize so much because I almost confused myself there. So and this is why I think too the ice cream ice ice cream ice cube tray comes in handy because you can just work yourself back through it um, and not have to um, worry about all the different names and types of screws. Uh, so Carl, someone's saying uh, she didn't have a long enough uh, or a long screwdriver to take off the apron. Is it okay to take off the front plate? Um, that's tough. Um, it may slip out. You can try to take the, the, the top plate off, but what it does, because the teeth are kind of um, on the bottom, if I can take the foot off. The teeth on the bottom here, if you see, they're not quite straight. They, sometimes they're a little bend to them. Um, so it, it may be a little difficult um, to do that. I'm trying to think um, what else we could use to, yeah, it's really important that you get that eight inch um, length Phillips head. Um, maybe put it off on hold and um, go to the store and get one for three to five bucks. And um, then you can go from there and reference the video. Um, Tim, you got any other suggestions? No, and I was just looking through my toolkit as well to see what else Perkins gives us to do yeah. that repair. Because like I said, the Perkins kit does come with the long shank um, Phillips that does come but but then it also does come with the short shank and I just happen to have a brailer in front of me and you can attempt to use the short shank um, Phillips head screwdriver to get into that apron space I would just be careful of again that leverage because you want to be as flat and straight onto those yeah. so you can try and attempt to use that uh, short shanked one that does come in a kit that's a smaller size though um, that the eight inch one does seem to be more successful and again those are in kits that I know we've already said that we're waiting on Perkins and Perkins has sent those out we just right. have to make sure that everybody is getting them and I, I think just be mindful um, try to avoid um, stripping those screws on the apron because if they do get stuck in the apron it's an expensive repair. I mean, at that point, um, the apron's a loss too. So just be very careful. Um, if you can run to the store and get yourself an eight inch um, or a long Phillips screwdriver, um, it'll save you a lot of grief and, and hopefully money uh, down the road. Um, moving forward, we took the, the front plate off now and we're almost done. There's one little piece, if you look to the right here, um, where the, this is called the mainspring, a little button shaped circle over here. It's kind of the powerhouse of the brailer. Um, it's a spring, but right above it is a little piece of metal you'll see hovering over the chain. Sometimes they're really, really hard, um, stuck in there with some grime. You should be able to pull it out with your finger. Um, and it's kind of um, curved a little bit. It's kind of flat, it's got a screw hole on one end and that screw hole is actually what um, kind of, uh, pretends to be a nut and um, keeps the right side of the top plate or right side of the front plate um, button, button down. So um, you need to remove called, that. And this is called a chain check. Yep. A chain so that's check. your chain check. Um, and also on older brailers, that will, will be a nut. It won't be a chain check Correct. curved like that. Now, if you were to send one out to repair to um, that was older that had a nut, um, it would more likely come back with a chain check in it. Yeah, it's a newer uh, modification that they put in there just so the chain doesn't, if it does get a little loose, it doesn't go flying off. It kind of keeps things um, kind of like the guard on your, on a bicycle or something like that. Uh, okay, and again, I put this in my ice, ice tray um, in with my um, two small screws that were on the, uh, the front plate. So I dropped that in there. And folks, we are officially, um, we have a naked brailler to say the least. And um, this, at this point, you can really examine um, the brailer, 
looking at the function and keys. If you'd like, we still can, you can put paper in this too to check the Braille um, at this point as well. Um, just be mindful you don't roll it all the way up in when it gets visually gets close to, or you can actually feel when it gets close to this uh, paper check over here. Um, just make sure you stop rolling and then close your lever down. And it, you should be able to, as long as it's not crazy uh, broken, um, should be able to still function. And so I can show you that um, real quick, if you don't mind. So again, I'm putting it underneath uh, what they call the stripper plate here um, for where the braille is actually made. Um, and that goes in there, lever down. And I keep my finger underneath because remember, the back plate kind of supports that in the upward position. So I keep it under there, so, because if it goes down, I, I can't roll. So I have to lift it up. And when it gets to the end, I drop it down when we're there. Two lines place it down. Just do a full cell, check the function. Not bad, actually. <laughs> Braille, I don't know if you guys can see. Uh, nope. Nope, okay. Anyway, Braille looks good. I can show you that um, at a later time. Line space functioning, different functions. Backspace is working. So, so far, and your Braille hopefully is like this, um, doing pretty well, but just might be dirty and need to be cleaned. So, that, that chain check, I can't seem to get it out. It's like stuck. How did you do that again? So, the chain check, I'll put that back in for you guys. Um, you just kind of lift up, put kind of a fatty part of your finger underneath there, and kind of pinch and pull. Or you can put downward pressure on it and kind of scoop and swoop away from you and, so, and until it moves. If it doesn't, find something small like um, in your kit, you half kits, I know there's been a little backup there. You can use an Allen wrench, put it in the hole, and give yourself a little leverage to, um, to pull it out that way. A pair of needle nose pliers, honestly, that's what I use. Got it. All right. Thank you. Okay. Awesome. Cool. Hey, success. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. So like we mentioned before, at this point, um, you can look at stuff, examine, flip, don't be afraid to flip it over. Um, you can see the bottom, the key links, the lever, all this stuff, looking for grime. Um, now we're going to get into, am I correct, Tim, we're moving towards cleaning at this point? We are going to go into plate installing at this point. Plate install. Cleaning is tomorrow. Thank you. I'm such an overachiever. Not I like tomorrow. To next week. Next week. See, there we go. Um, so right now we're going to go back into putting the plates. How are we doing on time? We, um, it's just about five o'clock. So still right. have 30 minutes. Cool. I'll move and back then... to this. And um, then we can answer any questions. All right, and then somebody right. did write, did you, I'm not sure if you address this, she says she doesn't have a chain check. That could be an older brailler. Um, it would just be a nut that's there. Um, if it's missing completely, um, you can order a nut, they're really inexpensive, or you can order a chain check and insert that back in. Um, when you do, just make sure the curve part is up. So I put it in wrong. Why don't you use the, uh, use the camera? the uh, endoscopic okay. camera. And well, and well, Carl does that too. Um, another thing, if you don't have that at all, is that that means one of your plate screws is not uh, fully holding the plate together because that screw is not gonna be screwing into anything that tighten everything up. So you can see this isn't a straight piece. There's kind of a bend. If I put it in the wrong way, that bend is gonna be going downward and you'll actually, I mean, pretty much functionally, you'll, when you put the plate back on, it'll really rub against the, um, sorry, the screw. It shouldn't be that close. That's almost, um, it is making contact. But if I pull it out the right way, again, the nut goes towards the front of the brailler, or sorry, the uh, hole goes towards the front of the brailler. It's resting, but I can put the fat part of my finger in there and get a good, good quarter inch, maybe an eighth of an inch in there, okay? So there's, there's some play there. Um, you can go ahead, you can see there's probably a little bit of uh, packing grease residue in there, stick wax. Um, I don't mind, just be mindful when you're putting the, the front plate back on. You may need to reach around and put your finger in there to hold it there while you tighten the, the screw down. Um, 
or the uh, current place. Was that helpful? I don't have a brailler in front of me, but I feel like I do. So I'd say that's extremely helpful. <laughs> I, I think I could go into the brailler and I would get that part right for sure. Yeah, okay. that's a really great tool that you have. That camera is super helpful. So, so to recap, naked brailler, we did the cleaning, let's pretend. Uh, we're going to do that next week. But you're going to put the uh, chain check back in with the bend facing up so the fat part of your finger can wiggle upwards a little bit. You'll feel kind of loose. That's a good thing um, in this case. And then you're going to take the front plate and slide it and match it up with the corresponding keys. Okay, and slide right down. Um, we're going to take our screwdriver. And I don't mean to work, work fast here, but I want to make sure I cover everything too. And give you guys time for any questions and we can go back through it. Um, I kind of put a little pressure on the screw or the front plate just to make sure it's lined up. You may want to visually look down Sometimes you can drop an Allen wrench or a toothpick in there to line the, the, um, the nut in there. And again, like I said before, sometimes this may slip out. So I just put my finger and I, you can feel the paper check there. So I drop my screw in. And again, I'm coming in here and making sure it's lined up. See, and it's not, so I got to come in a different angle. And then I caught it. And all I'm doing is, uh, as soon as I get to a stop, which is a little resistance, I'm doing a little quarter turn. That's it. These screws don't need to be super, you know, wrenched down or anything like that. Tim, do you need me to slow down or go faster? Nope, that's good. I was just going to okay. add just exactly what you just said. Just any screw in this entire machine does not need to be over tightened. Um, you'll notice if you over tighten your front plate and you really wrench down on it, the carriage that rides underneath that front plate will actually start to rub on the under on the underside of it and you'll actually hear a really gross metal rubbing noise and you'll probably know that you over tightened your front plate and so at this point once the front plate's on you've got the two screws we're going to go ahead and flip, we're basically working backwards here flipping the browner over i like to keep it um the front away from me at this point. Go ahead and grab my apron. Um, and again, that groove I mentioned before, which is right in here. We're gonna take a corner and kind of um, align the, the teeth on the front plate inside that. And it's not gonna wanna go at first. So if you can get one corner, doesn't matter. Sometimes it's the right side, sometimes it's the left side, sometimes it's both. This one it looks like my left side is working out better. And by holding out the corner there, just give it a little tap. And you'll notice at this point, and it's going to take some force, but like right now, it doesn't want to work very well. So you're going to have to pull it back out again and line it up. So those screw holes are lined up with the um, a brailler here. Um, so that may happen too. There we go. And so with so, those offset teeth, that's the pressure that you're trying to deal with of trying to put that apron on into that slot because you have 10 little teeth on the front plate that you sit there and have to all line up at once. And technically now, if Carl were to button this whole thing up and the brailler was just sitting there, really wasn't moved, the apron would just stay there because of the pressure that those offset teeth create. And so you want to move it left and right, kind of up and down a little bit to make sure there's the, if you notice when taking it out, on part of the, the side frames, we need those holes to line up. And so then we're going to take our uh, long Phillips head screwdriver. Um, if you have a magnet, sometimes magnetizing, um, especially things that are farther away from you are helpful. It kind of holds it on there. Um, and then I'm going to come in. And again, I have the, I have the brailler kind of tilted away from me. And what I like to do, because this sometimes it doesn't seat correctly, I take my my hand. I'm not putting any downward pressure on the on the um, Phillips head screwdriver. I'm just kind of making sure it lines up. And so slowly, sometimes I've got to back it out and make sure it seats correctly. Um, and then just kind of hold your finger there, give it a little bit of support. And then we can start turning. If at any point you feel any resistance, this is very important. You don't want to cross thread this. Um, and that's why it's very, I didn't, that's why it's very important to clean all of these things to make sure they run as smoothly as possible. 
Um, and so I'm just slowly going down. And as soon as I feel resistance, I might back it out a quarter turn because I now I have to line up the right side. So I want the apron to be loose at this point. Um, so I'm coming in on the right side here. Again, may need to manipulate and move. Uh, if you can see that rocking a little bit, kind of move in the apron. And see, this one's coming in at a bad angle. I'm going to back it out. I'm going to kind of reposition the apron and see if I can get it set and go a little slower. See, now it just wants to turn and it's not setting. So put a little pressure. And what I can add to in this brailler, as we were saying before, on this side, you can do it one of two ways. Carl's doing this one, but then like we were saying, if it is giving you a hard time, he can feed the long handle and the shank through the frame, through that back assembly, and it's gonna give you a better angle to tighten those screws. Yeah, okay, on this apron, they have a little. So we're just tightening down. Well, it doesn't want to go in very nice. So, and I just, as soon as I hit resistance, I just make a quarter turn, and that's it. Okay, now we're going to flip the brailler back over. Once we have those screws and washers in, okay, it's facing us. We're gonna rotate it so the back of the brailler is facing us. And just to give you a heads up um, about some of the grime that we've seen, and we'll, we'll um, make sure not to clean this one. So we can see it next week. As you can see this guy's pretty dirty. Um, Take my thumbprints right there. So hopefully nobody steal that. Um, and it builds up on the corners here. And you got to think all these cams, which are what um, we can get underneath there, push these. Um, I don't know if you can see it. Yep, you were there. Right there. Those are the little pins. So the feet of the pins that actually go up and down. And when they go up, they make braille on the underside of the paper. Um, and so they run back and forth, kind of moving left and right there. Um, and that, um, it's a lot of traveling of uh, two pieces of metal. And um, it will pick up a lot of grime. And this is the only part of the brailler that really, aside from the front underneath the uh, carriage, but the back has an opening for your bells and margins in the back, um, on the back plate. That's where a lot of the dust just comes in. Prime. So if you've got covers or even a nice lint-free towel, um, tell your students to cover them up at the end of the day. I know it's a hard thing to ask, but it will save um, dividends. My grandfather went to the Indiana School for the Blind, and um, I have his brailler um, that you know used to come in a big case. Thing looks brand new um, because it spent when it wasn't in use, it was put in a case. And um, anyway, from that perspective, so we did the apron, the front, excuse me, the front plate the apron, we're working backwards, now we're at the back plate. So here's the part we mentioned before. I like to examine my, my margins. This one's jammed. That's okay for our purposes today. So check things, check the bell. Um, we want to make sure, see if we can get this. I come in at an angle on the side of the paper check, making sure this corner right here catches the spring. Okay, and then I insert it underneath the paper check and then put the other side. I would also suggest making sure your embossing head is in the middle. Because what can happen is if, let's say the person you last used it was making, um, I don't know, some note cards and the margins were very uh, narrow. You go and put this back together. Now, because my margin stop is way over here, my brailler embossing head is on the outside of the margin. So therefore, when I move it, it's only going to move where the margin stop is. So just make sure your margins are all the way over on both sides, bossing heads in the middle, take the corner of the back plate, catch it on the spring, so the spring goes underneath, and then let the braille rest. Sometimes these can get a little warped and they'll just keep falling out and falling out. Just kind of hold it there with your hands, grab yourself your screws, 
and we'll start inserting those into the four corresponding threaded holes. And even with older um, paper checks, if you'll know it's under spring tension, so you should be able to hold that back plate on and kind of flick your paper check and there should be spring tension to it. Even on older broken ones, there should be some sort of movement. If you kind of just lift it up and it lazily drops down, also la lazily drops down, it's probably dirty. But if it, just, really... Sorry, if it just kind of clicks and doesn't spring back, you more than likely are gonna need um, a new paper check or you miss the spring itself. Yeah, so we want this sound. When I flip that up, does that tell me it's working? But if it's not underneath there, you're going to get this sound. It's just going to slowly fall down. You want and, it to go snap, snap, snap. And this is also the main lever. This is also the main lever that, as Carl said before, stops your paper from going into the brailler. So if you have a brailler that a specific student uses and they're using it and all of a sudden that's what starts happening, something could have messed with that screw. So when these machines are dropped, it could have jostled and you could actually look to the back and you would see that flat head part or that flat uh, spring outside of the brailler. And you technically can bend it back around and put it back underneath, but that puts a lot of undue stress on it and you have a greater chance of actually snapping it off. But since we're teaching you guys these wonderful skills to take the plates off, it's a quick, really easy, just take the back plate on or take it off put it back on correctly, and you should have that spring tension. And so when you put the, the black, the black, excuse me, the back plate, you kind of want to, if anybody's ever changed a tire, just kind of put the screws in, the four screws, and you want to make sure there's a little channel, if you notice underneath the uh, paper check, that's kind of been stamped into the, um, the back plate. Can you guys see that there? Can't see it. Right there. You want to line that up. So sometimes it'll see perfectly. Sometimes there's a lot more play on these brailers. Um, this one's pretty good. Let's kind of hold that in place. And then go ahead and tighten the four corners. I don't know why I do diagonally, but it really doesn't matter. But um, that's just what I do. So now we're getting very close to the end. We're going to rotate so the keys are facing us now. And our paper check is making that nice snappy sound. We're going to go ahead and rest the... Um, paper guide with the beveled side that's curved. Does this snake can be useful here? Yes. Um, okay, let me go switch to that real quick. I always forget to take the little word off. Okay, so you get a piece of, piece of paper. So, Looking at the part a little um, more in depth, you can see one side is, is beveled. We want that to face the inside, when I say inside, the middle of the braille. Okay, I, want, I don't want it facing out towards the knobs. I want the bevel facing towards the carriage. That makes sense, that makes sense, the working side of the braille. So if I walk this over, it's gonna rest just like that. The bevel you can see is towards the middle of the brailler. The plastic washer is also on the outside of the back plate, as well as the tightening nut, okay? You can loosen it and make sure it just kind of hangs on there. Um, sometimes these will get compressed too tight. You know, just need to back that out. Sometimes they get bent. Um, or sometimes the plastic washer can get too brittle over the years and break. If that's the case, then we'll go ahead and um, you need to replace that part um, because, yeah, you need to replace the part. So it rests there with the bevel facing towards the embossing head. Even if it's all the way over to the same side, that bevel is still facing the embossing head. Okay. And then, Carl, I want you to keep the snake cam on. And now that we've tightened everything up, um, put the top plate on just to make sure we show with the plastic washer on the outside of that um, right. plate. And, and Carl, can you verbally describe everything you're doing as you're doing? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> see how that was going to work. I purposely put tape on the back of this. Uh, <laughs> so you can see here the plastic washers on the outside and the nuts there. So I can tighten this, 
But again, this thing, if the plate, top plate isn't down, that bevel piece inside can actually, I've had it happen. You like, I put it in the right way, what's going on? But you can actually flip this thing, okay? So you just wanna be mindful. I like to, forgive me here, leave it there, loose, so I got enough space to work with. Put the top plate on, one-handed, yes. But you can see there, the washer did not go on the outside, so I'm gonna kind of pick it up, push it back down, and it's there. And then I go ahead and tighten this up, and then I'll move my margin wherever I want it. Um, I usually, when I service it, I line it up with um, the lever here, but it's kid preference, teacher preference, whatever you guys are using in terms of making sure those holes don't get into that paper stop right there, okay? Putting away the snake cam. My, I'm just gonna put this off the side for a second. I'm gonna take the top plate off because we still got one more thing to do. And somebody said that uh, her brailler does not have that piece. So it's just something else that could get ordered yeah. or inserted. Yes, and so, um, it, yeah, and Carl and I are probably about to say, say the same thing. That Perkins has a full service parts um, shop online. And yep. so, as Carl said before, the markup on that, like they, it's probably, it's very little. Um, I'm trying to remember if I can remember an accurate price for that piece because we just ordered some ourselves. Um, yeah. But this would be- I think it's be, like four, four dollars. It's like four dollars and it's, and that mace, that actually is a lot because most of these are screws and nuts that are five cents or 90 cents. Uh, but because of the machining of that part itself, it's four dollars. But yes, that would improve the, um, accuracy and function of your brailler to get that piece. Okay, and uh, Annalie has her hand up. Okay. Yes, this um, paper guide piece, can you explain what you mean by beveled? Yeah, so I'm going to take this back. Um, oh. You see how, if we look. Don't, don't tell me see because I'm blind. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. No, um, okay, so do you, have, do you have the piece in your hand? Yeah, there's like a, it's like a rectangular little piece. Yep, it's a rectangular piece. You know, um, one side of it is um, very square. You could right. probably put up to a wall and you might build a nice house with just that square because it's, you know, very machine piece. And the other one other is- side, Yep, is cut away. Um, you know, like a bulldoze countertop. Yeah, it's right. curved. Yes, ma'am. So we want that curve to be pointing. Okay, remember the screw is gonna go on the outside of the braille or the back plate. Right. So when, when we set that in that little channel there, the bullnose part is pointing towards the center of the brailler, away from the knob. Okay, because I thought when I took it out, it was pointing downward, and I've been trying to put it back in. The gotcha. Yeah, no, I understand. And sometimes that happens. Sometimes um, I'll accidentally put it to where the, um, I guess, smaller um, side or small, small, shorter length of the, um, of the uh, paper excuse me, paper guide is facing up where the bevel is pointing upwards or downwards. So we just wanna make sure that that bevel, kind of a half of an arrow, if you will, um, is facing towards the inside of the brailler. Does that help? Yes, sir. Thank okay. you. Okay. Woo, Dr. Lewis would be proud of my visual description skill. <laughs> um, all right, so I'm gonna back out here. And um, once we have that in place in the channel, the paper guide, we're gonna to move towards the actual stylus and reinsert the lever. So we have a screw with a little tiny washer that we put in there to keep safe and cozy while we finish the rest of this. So forgive me putting this, putting this in my mouth because I gotta take it apart. Oh God. <laughs> so right now, Carl is taking oh. the tiny screw out of the lever with the camera in his mouth. And, <laughs> <laughs> and when we go to insert this lever, the reason that we like just we choose we want to keep that screw because the washer that is connected with that screw into that lever is very tiny yep. and on any floor and any surface it will disappear as soon as you let go of it and so when we insert this lever in we have to obviously take that screw and washer out and we're going to feed the lever back onto the post now you'll okay. notice that if you just go straight through the, it's going to feel like it's in and it's actually is not. There should be an audible kind of pop or an audible click that you should hear and feel. And this normally will not happen if you just feed that lever straight through. 
So what Carl's doing here is he's actually kind of using one hand to play with the metal bracket that the lever is feeding underneath of. And then he is wiggling the lever back and forth until it feeds in and gives that little bit because there's a bevel and a kind of collar. a collar on the back side of that lever. And that's what's going to be going towards the machine. And that's what has to feed into that space that eventually when everything is put together and you use the lever is moving that metal piece to allow for the carriage and everything to unlock. And this can be kind of tricky. So don't be discouraged. Take your time. You might have to play with it a little bit to get that seated correctly. Um, so yeah, for those who can't see, there is a collar on this. You got to push that on. And while I do that, you see there's a little bit of a gap. That collar also has to fit through this ring. And the ring doesn't like to be all nice and stand equidistance around the post that we're fitting it around. So we have to maneuver that and by pushing it a little bit to get it nice, as close as we can, okay? And it'll really help with the overall functioning um, down the road because this is linked all the way down to the, the uh, teeth and that dirty pawl I showed you guys um, at the very beginning. Um, so I'm gonna go put this down real quick and then show you the rest of the part here. So the washer goes on the, the nut here, or the, um, excuse me, the screw. I place that in there. We know it's seated. I like to keep my thumb on here while I do this, so forgive me biting down on this. While you can't talk, um, just a heads up, Carla, it's 523. Okay. So, it's gonna work fast here, sorry. That's the smooth, smooth as fast, Carl. Okay, moving <laughs> smooth. Um, again, putting the top plate on, making sure the paper guide is in place. I go grab my screws and reinsert those. Remember, the big ones are in the holes at the very top and the holes that are closest to you on the top plate. And the smaller screws are towards the back of the and there is no particular order that these have to go into and if you're accidentally going through fast um, you'll realize that if you put if you try to put one of the smaller screws into one of those um, nuts they are going to go right through there should be resistance for you to screw them in okay now the top plate's on we're going to flip it over just where we started and I'm going to take my top plate. Um, you notice, bottom I don't know plate. if you can see it. Sorry, excuse me, bottom plate. There's a punch logo on some of them that say, you know, Perkins and that kind of stuff. Really doesn't matter. Um, I like to keep it to where the logo or the information about Perkins is on the outside if we can. Um, I grab my screws, place them in, in the middle where you can take them one at a time and just move around. You may have to position the bottom plate to line up with some of the corresponding things. If you're finding it's really off, um, you can go back down, back through this and maneuver the apron left to right to kind of line up with the holes. Or, I mean, I've done this too. Um, you can find something, a little file or something to pull away some of this is what they call like a hardy cardboard, um, pretty stiff stuff. Um, so you can file some of that away. It's really not going to hurt. I would do it away from the brailler so none of the little shavings go into the brailler itself. But I have done that because I'm just, you know, Sometimes it's the end of the day and you're like, woo, I got it done. I'm like, I'm not taking this brailler apart again to just maneuver the apron. So. And, and you like Carl was saying, this can be one of the most frustrating pieces when you get a brailler and you're putting it back together. Because of that shift, these bottom plates are all machined and mass produced. And so when you start moving everything around, and if, if anybody does still have their apron in their hand or looking at it, those machine screw holes that run across the um, the apron piece, those obviously move depending upon where you tighten those. And so it can be kind of difficult to go through and you do sometimes get frustrated and muscle. And that's where you want to throw your $810 machine across the room. Is it 900 now? Not sure. 
it went up. I think they changed the price for the first time in, I don't know, 50 years. And I got one more screw. I skipped the hole because it wasn't working as well. So we'll see if I get it in there. There we go. And so we can see all screws are in. And be careful you don't put them. There's two other corresponding holes that are closest to the foot. Avoid sticking them in there. They're kind of difficult to get out. That is actually a, um, an adjustment uh, port to the brailler, if you will, to adjust the, the beam and, and um, some of the braille production. Folks, that is putting the brailler, taking the braille apart, examining and putting the plates back on. Um, this is our first go around doing virtually here. So hopefully you got some information useful information. Um, hopefully we didn't frustrate you, um, or maybe you're just understanding how difficult these machines can be, but we're here to help whenever or however possible. So, um, Any other questions so far? Whatever time we can extend. I've, I've got time if you guys can, but whatever um, works. We have one, uh, one question. I've heard to put them in, to put them all in loosely, then go back and tighten, right? Tim, you want to answer that one? Um, that, that is an option, especially at the bottom plate, if you're finding that you're having to really have that bottom plate play, if you will, to be able to let it move around a little bit. Um, that's definitely a great way to do it and to make sure that everything is connected in that manner. Because then once you know you have all 11 of those screws in, they will all go in um, one after another, as long as that is built up. And again, I know I've em emphasized it a few times, with any of the screws, don't over tighten because um, as Carl said, when we first started, every piece and angle is tied into another piece and angle of this machine. And so when you start over tightening or in some cases under tightening, it really affects the function of the machine. Absolutely. I think the only um, hiccup I may have with loosening and then putting it back together and tightening it all up, you may want to get put your apron on, like top, excuse me, front plate on, then put the apron on. Then if you flip it over, you can align, go take that bottom plate, check it to make sure these three screws are lined up, tighten that apron down, then you can go ahead and you should be good to go because everything else, um, even the back um, plate lines up pretty good. It's the apron that usually causes um, you to make any shifts with the bottom plate. So, um, that's not a bad idea, actually. Good, good call to check your, once you get the apron on, take the bottom plate, check it, make sure things kind of line up. And then you can start, you know, flip it over and check, flip it over and check as you add the plates on. If that's something um, that would be more comfortable. Cool, good, more good advice. I think this was phenomenal. Uh, like I said, I don't have the braille writer in front of me, but I feel like I could muddle through some of it. And when I re, when I watch the video, I, I have no doubt that I'll be able to do that. So this has been extremely helpful. Um, does anybody else have any questions, advice, things that you've gotten hung up on? I think Amanda still can't get the screws out of hers. I don't know if you have any other suggestions. Uh, and so that's, that's where the hammer. A virtual setting. And it's, yeah, if you can make sure that screw is, that screwdriver is upright and kind of give it a quick little tap and tap in a turn. I tried help it. Out. Yeah, Didn't and, work. and so, and Carl's got an idea, or he's gonna show us something here with a- Well, oh, I don't know, I just was trying to take a look at it um, to give you perspective. And the other view is what we're talking about here, is they just have these door knobs on the side here. I'm not sure why they put them there, because it is frustrating, you can't even take the, the top plate off. Um, it's not a necessity. Um, the brailler will still work without these. Your levers will still work. You just have a hole in them. So, but I don't want to, I don't advocate destroying anything. Um, yeah. I had trouble getting those little, not the right hand little knob off. We just could not move the screw. And I finally got my new tires and held the knob and then tried the screw and I got it off. Yeah, AP, um, excuse me, FIMC turned us on to these little screwdrivers. They're nifty. Um, really uh, very small um, Phillips head screwdriver um, that you can get in there. And I mean, you know, give yourself some support, push. And if you need to, take a small mallet and just give it a little wrap, you know, 
Um, one of the other things you could do is start cleaning with some rubbing alcohol. Um, if you even have, um, I'd stay away from WD-40, um, but if you can kind of tape off the area and just use a little bit, let it sit and maybe there's, it could be rusted and seized up. We've had that happen before. Um, taking a pair of pliers to give yourself and do it on the, on the doorknob part. Even closer down by the stem if, to get a better grip, you can see that. And inserting your screwdriver in there and giving you a little more leverage and keeping the screwdriver still because it'll work both ways. So if you can put forward pressure on that Phillips small screwdriver and then use your leverage to do the turning um, with the, the needle nose pliers or any kind of pliers, vice grips for that matter. Um, Tim, you got any other suggestions? Nothing that I can think of. Those are the kind of the, are those, yeah. those are I mean, few, very few pieces that kind of turn to the crux. And that's one that, like Carl said, it, it really hinders the even basic breakdown of just the machine if you can't get those knobs yeah. off. But that's a great I mean, piece of advice to what Carl's got in his hand is that rubbing alcohol to get in there. rubbing alcohol, just put it on there. And you let's see it. If, I'm not advocating one way or the other, but um, <laughs> this stuff here, <laughs> um, yeah. if you go on, um, it sounds crazy, um, gun supply stores, some of our cleaning stuff that we use that we can talk more in depth. But to help you over the weekend, you can get it and order it. It's called CLP. Um, a little bit goes a long way. I mean, we just use little brushes and dab it, go off and do something else. Um, it's, it's a- very um, greasy. It's a fine, it's very greasy. Um, and so I would put this, if you're gonna store it, you can buy a smaller bottle than this, um, store it in a, a small Ziploc bag because it just seems to get out everywhere. <laughs> like, I mean, yeah, if I put this on the table, then it'll be on the table. Um, but you can put a little dab, um, anyway, put a little dab there, rub it on there, let it sit. Um, and, and kind of work it left and right or um, tighty loosey to get it, get it going. Um, we have a few, um, a few questions and comments, but it is 533. So I wanna announce the closing code and um, let our captioner go. But those of you, if you wanna stay on and ask a few questions, it sounds like Carl and Tim have a, a little bit of time. Our, our closing code for this session is removal. So opening code was plate and closing code is removal. And I posted, I sent the website again for the uh, form to complete if you wanna request CEUs. The evaluation for the entire workshop, our survey will be sent out at the end of the fourth one. So after all four. Uh, so I wanna just go through some of these comments. I love the snake cam. This was great to have the camera views. Super excited for next week. The, um, the videos, I will, we will probably get those up in a, in, within the next day or two. And FIMC has a YouTube channel. So just search for FIMC VI on YouTube and that's where we'll be posting them. Uh, we might also have them linked to our events page under past events. Um, no question, just really appreciate this. The information was great. Thank you so much. Somebody said there, um, starting with a broken brailler, but thanks for the information. Thank you all, this is amazing. Uh, so yes, yeah, thank, and thank you all for coming. And remember uh -huh. next week you need to have, we're starting with the plates off, right guys? Yes. Yes, if we can, not a big deal if we can, we can spend a few minutes if we need to, but that'll help the time um, for sure. Okay, so if anybody wants to stick around to ask some questions, uh, we can do that. I have a question.